What is going on YouTube? It is Adrian Hawkins of HawkFit and we are coming at you with another video. And this one is rehabbing an injured athlete. And kind of the premise behind this video series was that um, people who are into bodybuilding and powerlifting um, over time they just they hit the gym so much or they hit uh, certain movements so much that over time wear and tear does affect occur on the body and they become injured or worn down or they don't uh, do enough to kind of loosen it up and uh, an injury occurs and so basically uh, the premise of this series is to take um, the most common injuries that an athlete uh, primarily in this series we're going to be looking at power lifters and bodybuilders but also um, regular ath athletics so basically other sports as well and we're going to look at some of those injuries and we're going to look at how to rehab those injuries and certain things that you should do to get yourself back up to full strength and um, originally the the idea or the flow chart for this series was we were going to start from top down so we were going to look at like neck injuries shoulders elbows wrists we were going to take the back and and split the back up into two segments and yeah i know that the back is um, one area one muscle but um, looking at the back we were going to take the upper back and then the lower back um, starting with the, the lumbar spine and take that as its own section since there are a lot of injuries uh, in the lower back and then we we're going to go to hips knees and then ankles but in kind of discussing the videos and the layout what we decided was it would actually be better to start with the back and in particular the lumbar spine and uh, a little bit of the hips and um, that being instead of starting top down so from the head to the feet so we're going to start from the middle being the lumbar spine and the hips and then expand both up and down and kind of work our way outwards and that just seemed to be the best thought Steven came in here today and he said that Steven I was doing a squat and uh, Dr. Menya was doing a squat and and something popped while I was at the bottom of the squat. Did you hear a sound? Pop! Oh, yes, I heard a sound. And oh, when I, I had to rock the thing up, I had to rock it back up, or I had to just lay down right away. And, and I, the next morning it was worse. And, and I couldn't move. And oh, the corner between, it's, it's, it's right there. I feel, I feel like it's right at that corner there. And, and, and when I bend over, oh, I can't go any further than that. That's exactly where I feel that pain at. That's one scenario. And then they say, well, Dr. Menya, I did my squats and I cleans, power cleans, oh, and then there, and then I come up, ah, and then I come up, and then when I was about to drop it down, when I was right here and about to, oh, my back. But this time I felt it higher up here. Oh, right there. Matter of fact, when you touch it, I can feel it. So that's scene number two. A power clean or a squat. Then the third scene, they come and say, I was doing a deadlift. I was bending, doing everything correctly. And on my way up, I had to let that weight down and I had to climb up. And then I just had to sit down. And when I sat down, that's when it felt okay. But after five minutes of sitting down, I felt that pain come around this way. And right now, when I sit, for more than five minutes, and then I come up, oh, that just hurts so much. All those three scenarios. The first one, which was a squat, when he was squatting down, his hips slid, of course, and the spine stays forward, 
but the pelvic girdle glides backwards in order for that squat to happen. And then as his way up, it got stuck. One got stuck and he couldn't. The spine, the big long trunk of the spine could not fit back in. And so the SI joint got sprained or strained. So that's the first one. The second one, he was doing a power clean. So he was, he was down here. And then a power clean, of course, you suddenly make that movement and you catch the weight on your way down and you feel something in your back that catches and you just have to let it down and then ever since whenever you want to get up you feel the catch and it's a little bit higher on there that is a flexor that has not turned off to allow you it's spasm to hold you in your lower body to the QLs and the multifidus and the erector spinalis have all suddenly come alive at once but then on your way to stand up they don't shut off and then they compress your lower back and there's pain that's your flexors that have spasmed and the QLs have spasmed and that's a flexor injury and then the last one was uh, they were doing a deadlift. Everything was done correctly, but on their way up, oh, some things refused to shut off. And then it hurts. They just had to put the weight down. And now when they sit, when they get up, all of a sudden that pain, as the more they sit, the more pain it becomes. So that they could have herniated or they could have had protrusion or they could have triggered an old injury of a protruding disc. And that's what that is, including the sequoia of the, of, the, of the flexors. All right, so that's what's going on. So we're gonna stop there for now so that we can have Mr. Mr. Hawk go show us all those exercises and then we'll, we'll come back and revisit with that, okay? There. So that's that's a squat, and you can see Hawk is doing a squat, and I'm just holding it, and then coming back up. That's the right form, and you can, he's doing his right form. Go ahead, and I'm using the the metal along there to kind of match, and you can see that. And up, good, and then rack it back up. That's good. What happens is the, your spine. There's low dorsus here. As you go down, your pelvis shifts backwards. As you go down, your pelvis shifts backwards. And what happens is, in between there, between the, the L5 and, and the S1, and the crest of your pelvis, there's some ligaments there. They're called sacroiliac ligaments over there. Those can overwork, and then guess what? They hold including the muscles, they hold the pelvis there and then they spasm and that's an injury that can happen. So that's injury one. So injury number two. All right, this is nothing. Full easy. disclaimer, I do not practice hand cleans. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't give a so I don't, I don't want any... His form was horrible. <laughs> I don't practice hand cleans. <laughs> All right, we're gonna do at least five of those. So that's the one kind of power clean, and then there's the one of power clean where the legs come in and you catch yeah. the weight on your way down. So you want me to jump? Jump. There you go. Now, I want you to see the potential of where the injury can come. So as you can see, look at the look at his back, and he'll slow motion it for you. Okay. Focus on the on the lumbar area. Go for it. Look at the movement 
of the SI joint. The lower spine, one last one. Sumo or do you want just conventional? Both. Both. Right. We're gonna do sumo and conventional. The sumo is is the one that creates the most engines. Because yeah, so look at that. That one looks most stable. The whole squat is working, the hamstrings, the glutes, everything is working at once. Alright, two more. You can see there's very little movement at the SI joint and the lumbar. And there you go, and that's enough. Now the sumo, this is where a lot of injuries come, especially if you don't know what you're doing. Because what happens is, look at how your grip is on the inside. How the grip has come on the inside. And look at how the legs are wider, the feet are wider. The adductors are being stretched in this one. There you go. And then the hyperextension at the end of it. Look at the hyperextension of the back. Up. Good. We're going to go one more time, two more times actually. Okay, give me that hyperextension. Go. Look at that. That's so from. From a wide pelvic girdle, adductors are stretched to a very hyper low doses of your lumbar area, and that's good. And that's the and that's the final injury. He had come in with that injury out of those three samples that we gave you. The first thing I will do is I'll activate the glutes. Why? Because the flexors are the opposite of your glutes. Your flexor, the opposite of that is the glutes. All those squats made the flexor shorter and made the stretch, the glutes stretch. So the opposite has to happen in order to challenge the flexor, which is that. So I'll do glute kickbacks. That's a good rehab start. So, so if if the pain, if he say that Dr. Menya, my left lower back hurts more than I feel the band of it, but my left side hurts a little bit more. Because most of the time people are right-sided and they use there's more motor practice developed on the right side, so the weaker side will be the left. Now some of us, we overwork that side so much that they don't realize that this is injured, they realize the side that they use most. I know, particularly, Mr. Hawk, right side, has more tightness because he uses that. Is that true? Yeah. So, for me, that's hyper, hyper active. I want to activate this to even that up. So let's use this. Let's do that blue kick. Now for me, I will do what? I will use my hand to assist in that press. So, of course, he can use a machine for that. Okay. But I'm gonna use my hand. I don't know if I have enough strength to sustain this push, but it's all about repetition. It's all about repetition. He does it enough time, all of a sudden that muscle feels weaker because I am variating it. As he keeps doing it, I become stronger. I become stronger versus a dead weight, which is the same weight the whole time. I start light on him. Are you feeling that? Yeah. Yeah. I'll go high, go taller, and fully extend that leg. There you go. Fully extend that leg. Fully extend that leg. Extend that leg. Four more. Three more. Two. And as soon as he's done with that, he lays on your back, he lays your back. And the same leg that we were stretching, so now we stretch the flexor. We stretch the flexor. Because that's the one that was what? That was the one that was tight. That's the one that created that injury. So now we're stretching that flexor. We're trying to loosen up the flexor. 
while the glute is, is actively becoming alive, we're loosening up the muscle that's creating the, the compression on his lumbar. The, the flexors are pulling, and that's what I'm stressing now. Meanwhile, I'm putting what? I'm putting my thumb on the track of where the flexors are running. I will repeat that three to four times on the same side. Intermediately or intermediately, I will do what? I will also do two sets of the right side. The injury, I do four sets versus two on the right side. The right side is not where the injury happens, but also the right side is what he uses more. I will grab and take over if it's an acute injury, if it's a chronic injury, then I assist. But if it happens just 24 hours ago, I just grab and take over because I don't want to create more spasms. If it hurts so much before I start the work, I can sometimes use current to loosen that up or I can use ice to make it numb. They call it cryotherapy. Alright? Alright, we can get up there.